morning everyone as we come together to start a new week. Uh, today is Monday the 4th of May and we continue morning prayer in the Easter season. And so we begin with our opening responses. <clears throat> o Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And so we come together to uh, say our Easter anthems from 1 Corinthians and the Book of Romans. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We'll keep a few moments of silence as we gather ourselves before God this morning. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 103, and the refrain is, The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set, his, set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful to those who fear him. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. 
for he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower of a field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. For the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old, and endures for ever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding, and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Merciful Lord, as we come from dust and return to dust, show us the face of our Redeemer, that in your frailty we may bless your name and praise you all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And so we continue in our readings from the book of Exodus, chapter 32. And uh, last week we heard of Aaron who, and his brothers who were made priests by ordination. And so we come to the next stage of the movement of the people of Israel in um, the desert. And the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain. The people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us. Who shall go before us? As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mould and cast an image of a calf. And they said, these are, these are your gods, O Israel, you brought it, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamations and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being, and the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf, and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven and all this land that I have promised. I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it for ever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring upon the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so, so we move on to our readings from the book of Luke. And we've heard about the birth of John the Baptist and um the birth of Jesus 
And now we come to the point where Jesus comes to the temple. And so Luke chapter 2. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travellers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years, and in, and in divine and human favour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? So we come to the song of Zechariah, the Benedictus. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Shall we pray? Holy God, we do thank you for this new day and for this new working week. Pray for those setting out for work this morning, whatever they are doing. We pray for them, Lord, that you will be a blessing to them and bless them on their way. We pray, Lord, for all those who are heading to, a work, heading to work nervous of what will come to them today. Pray particularly for all our frontline workers and for those who are seeking to make the lives of others much easier. We pray for carers going into individual homes in our communities. 
We thank you for the work that they do. We pray for all those in our care homes and our nursing homes. For those who are going into our hospices this morning for a long shift. And for those who are going into hospital. Lord, be their strength and their song today, we ask. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our cycle of prayer today, we pray for the people and the church congregations of Fiskerton. We pray, Lord, for a blessing upon them at this time. Uh, split apart by the events of these days, but, Lord, together in heart and body and mind and soul, thinking of one another, being part of the body of Christ together. Lord, we pray for them that today will be a good day. We pray for Fiskerton School and for staff who will go in this morning and for the children and we pray lord that today will be a good day for all of them lord in your mercy hear our prayer and lord we pray for all those who are finding this time particularly tough Pray for all those with mental health difficulties who find life difficult anyway. We pray for all those who are losing purpose in their lives because there's no work or no kind of focus in the week. We pray for those feeling down because the weather changed a little and it's darker and more difficult to go out and to be out. We pray, Lord, for all those who are feeling sad today. Sad because they're not well. Sad because they are mourning the loss of a loved one. Sad because they can't be where they feel they need to be today. Sad because they have lost the physicality of relationships. Lord, these are tough times for so many people, times of sadness. We pray, Lord, that they might, everyone might find solace in you at this time and blessing in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray, Lord, for all those for whom treatment and um, um, diagnosis has been put on hold over this last few weeks. We pray for those who are anxious. We pray for those who are still undergoing chemotherapy. And we pray, Lord, for healing and for strength. pray, Lord, for the National Health Service as a body, and we thank you for them. And we thank you that as some services begin to switch to look beyond COVID-19, we pray, Lord, that you would give two people the energy they need to start another big piece of work again and to adjust to a new way of being again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves today, Lord. We pray for peace. We pray for a sense of purpose and a sense of mission. We thank you that despite um, the, our church buildings being closed, your church is very much alive in this nation, doing what it does every day of every week of every month of every year witnessing to your goodness and we give you thanks lord that perhaps now we're more visible in what we're doing but pray lord 
that among us your kingdom would come and your will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, our collect, or our special prayer, if you like, for the day, uh, remembers saints and martyrs, particularly in the e e era, or the area of the Reformation. So let us pray. Merciful God, who when your church on earth was torn apart by the ravages of sin, raised up women and men in this land, who witnessed to their faith with courage and constancy, Give to your church that peace which is your will, and grant that those who have been divided on earth may be reconciled in heaven, and share together in the vision of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And so to all of you, have a good start to the week and have a good day today particularly. Um, I'll be back here again at 7 o'clock this evening for Compline and then again tomorrow uh, for morning prayer at 7.30. It's lovely that we can be able to, that we can join together in this way. So God bless to everyone and lots of love to everyone and do have a good day. Bye. <laughs>